Welcome back to the Nightlife Podcast Season 3 and Episode, let's say 7, but I think it's more like 8. I'm not 100% sure. And today we are back here from Barracuda in Coconut Grove, uh, where we just had last week's um, interview with Lee Kessler, the owner. We say hello to you, Lee, um, and thank you for having us one more time. Today I am going to interview someone who I met recently in the industry and who's been around for a while actually but uh we just haven't been you know worked in the same venues until very uh recent and uh my friend now um welcome mercedes, mercedes. Hi, how are you guys the show after I've, I've heard more than one name for you so i don't know which mercedes. one is the real there you go um so mercedes has been in the industry for a while you have done almost, different things uh yeah close to almost 10 years on and off okay yeah so in the past 10 years by the way guys i always forget remember to get the book on amazon thank you to lmg <laughs> for being our sponsor and remember to get uh, find um me on, on online at the nightlife entrepreneur on instagram and you find all the episodes at nightlifepodcast.com all right what are your handles it's just instagram just instagram which is uh mercy's night nine there you go We'll put it down here so you guys can find her. Um, all right, so you were saying you've been around for the past 10 years. And, Almost 10 years. And you've done a few different things. Yes, I have. Uh, mostly on the beach. Okay. Um, started taking pictures, then became a dancer. Uh, okay. Then I got hired with a marketing group to do the guest list. And from there, I just kept on going up there to go. being a coordinator, VIP host, name it. Mostly the front door. Okay. Okay. All right, so... Today, we are going to talk mostly about the front door and uh, your job at the front door and working with the venue owners, promoters, dealing with promoters, reservation, staff, clientele, that kind of stuff. And one of the biggest things, the difference between working on South Beach, you know, a uh, big, you know, South big Beach. Big difference. Yeah, big and difference. working on the other side of the bridge over here on Brickle, which is where we actually uh, met. Actually, we are today here in uh, the Grove, which is also very different. I don't know if you have ever worked over here. Never worked on this side. This is very different. We, we had an interview um, for last week's podcast um, with the owner of this venue, and this is a whole, like, don't you feel like you're the, like, it's a chill West? Vibe. Yeah, you know, it's whole, very chill vibe. Yeah. One thing that we don't get in the nightlife, right? Not at all. Anymore. Like, that's one of the first things I want to talk about. Why is it that it doesn't feel like it's just one team working together? Don't, don't you get that? Like, not everywhere probably, but... Uh, I would think that it's kind of like that, but it's not. Okay. You know, going into Brickle, it's uh, brand new to me. It's like kind of the same concept, just different. It's just different. It's new. So what, what, what would you say is the biggest difference? Um, the biggest difference is like at the beach, um, they have a lot of control at the door. There's a lot. Like the door dominates, I, I feel like it's the majority of the control has to be starting at the door. Got it. You know, and then into the club. Brickle, I feel like it's more lenient right. at the door. I don't feel like it's stricter, as right. strict. So, so I would think that one of the main reasons that this happens is because on South Beach, um, you have the tourism, you have um, a lot of promoters that are in-house promoters hired by the venue, and you have a club owner, club manager, and a VIP host that pretty much handle all of the reservations, all that kind of stuff. When it comes to Brickle, you have a promoting company that partners with the club Mm -hmm. on one specific night yes. usually they don't bring any extra uh, promoters for like uh, like in-house mm -hmm. or, or any of that kind of stuff um, because it's very very close like you know especially the niches are very different you know it's kind of like a closed network it, yeah. it's a very of close promoters network. yeah like I can tell you from our parties if I am there physically at one of the parties as I have been lately for example it's I can tell you 100% like who sat at what table and whose client that was whatever. which is something that if you are the door you would normally know yeah at the beach or kind of stuff but normally promoters don't really know that you know like if you ask 
a, a promoter at the end of the night, where was everybody? Or a week later, I could probably tell you, like from a month back, like I remember that guy was here. He spent this much, and that other one sat over there. That he was wearing the hat. The other one was, you know, all that kind of stuff. But it is very, very complicated um, to understand. Like I don't get it. Why in one city things could be so different from one side of the bridge to the other side of the bridge? Like what is the like what what do you think makes that di that so different? Like, I'm still trying to understand that. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm still trying to like figure it out. Right. Because I haven't even been on this side, so I'm wondering like, okay, how is it on this side then? Right, right. So let me ask you something. What is when somebody talks about uh, being a VIP host? Yes. What is the job? What is exactly what you do? Okay, so when I hear VIP host to me, that is not a person that just you're walking in the table like a regular Hooters or a restaurant that they're just taking it. To me, a VIP host, your job... Which more of a hostess. Hostess, yes. To me, a VIP host is strictly there to book tables. That is your job. It's a sales-based position. So when I think of VIP host, I think of sales. Sales, 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 sales. Your job is to book tables all day, every day, every week. Got it. So does a VIP host... Because we're... It's more of what happens on the beach, or you're, what you're saying. Currently, a VIP, a VIP host yes. in the Brickell area, I can tell you, that does not bring one client usually, unless, mm -hmm. unless, the VIP host has been there for a while and gets contacts, you yeah. know, from the clients that Gradually. already come in and then brings them back. But they still, you know, still. Something that they, they try not to do is like bring them back on any other night that it's not the promoter that originally mm -hmm. brought that person. It's just because Brickle, you don't have like a base clientele. It's That's a lot of things. locals. It's locals, but it's also like you can go to a venue on Friday and then on Saturday and it'll be a completely different crowd, a completely different vibe, a completely different... You know, Absolutely. Yeah, it's very, very music-wise. Uh, bro, everything is, is, it could be different. Um, sure can. So it's very hard for a VIP host to bring people back on a different night because that client that came on a Saturday may not like what's going on on a Thursday. So, you know. And then promoters are very selfish and jealous of what they bring to the table. They don't they want are. to share with the club or with the VIP host or with the staff or whatever. It's, it, it gets very complicated in that sense. Um, I'm very open to sharing clientele. One of the reasons is because I'd rather have those people experience different things and have myself concentrate on giving the best experience possible for them. So if, if, if a client, I bring a client to a venue and they come in on a different night because somebody else invited them. Let's say that somebody else is a VIP host who I introduced to my client. Mm -hmm. And they bring them back on a different night because they have a huge event, artists, whatever, and they come on that night. I have to make sure that the next time that client comes to me, I give them a better experience than whatever they could have had on the other night. So that's my job as a promoter. So it makes it a little competition, per se. Yeah, I don't But I gotta share, you know. But I, but I have to be able to share. I shouldn't be like complaining, like why are you talking to my client or why are you? But it not? does happen. Yeah. It does happen. It happens. I dealt with that a lot, dealing with promoters. That so they would right. come up to me and be like, "Hey, can you do something?" And I'm like, "Right." So they really can't do anything. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you right now. We are being seen all over the world. Yes. But most of the people that are on the other side of that, right there, are promoters. Yeah. Yes. I guess. So so. <laughs> So those guys, that some of them understand, some of, some of them don't. They're just beginning, they, they, they're very selfish of their clients and, and they wanna make sure that nobody takes them away, which I understand in a way, there's a little bit of that. You know, the, I think what people need to understand is that we are one team. If you work for the venue, and, and some promoters are the venue's partner during that night, some promoters work for the venue. I think that's one of the main differences there. One of the With parts. South Beach and Brickell? Yeah, like understanding the difference. Like I, like we've been on the beach also. I'm used to being with both. I'm used to working right. one night and having both a promotional group and in-house. Right. All at the same time. Like, yeah. it can get a little hectic. It is hectic. Very, know. very we've hectic. We've done that when we're on the beach. We've done that on the beach and we've done it a few times. That's why we always end up back on this side. Because for us, 
the this way is more what we are used to, I guess. You know, as a matter of fact, you could I could like a, every venue in Brickle, I could tell you exactly like who their VIP host is, and they're not really a VIP VIP host the way you mentioned what a VIP host should be. You know. Yeah, it's a big difference. I'm yes. having a little trouble with that. <laughs> right, right, right. Replacing yeah, myself. Yeah. We gotta meet somewhere in between. So. True. True that. True that. So, what do you think should be the first change in order for promoters and I guess staff? Because it, VIP host is part of the staff of the from the venue. Or are you talking more about like the merging? From yeah. the different locations. Well, the thing is this. I don't think people are working together. Definitely not. You know what I mean? I, I don't think it, people. everybody's working either for themselves and thinking about themselves only or thinking about how do I kiss ass to the owner. Absolutely. You know, and it's a whole thing about the owner and make sure that the owner sees that I'm the shit and I'm the one that brings all this and da, 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 da. Yeah. And it's just like, to me, it's hilarious. I mean, I've been on both sides. I've been the owner. I've been the promoter. I I know exactly how everybody operates. I've seen all the all the different um, kinds of people and, and the way some people are mean to others and the way some people try to bring others down. You know what I mean? Uh, it just sucks. I think but, that's horrible. But how do you start breaking that? Oh, I think that, I think the first step is like everybody has to work really, really hard on communication. Okay. And putting their um, everybody has their own opinion, and I think at one point it has to be set, put aside. Right. You know, for the team, you gotta listen to everyone. Because right. if you listen just to yourself and what your person is saying, what this person is saying, right. And then half of the team is on a different page, and it's just gonna crash. Right. I'm gonna crash. Everybody like agrees to disagree. I feel the most of the time. Right. So what would you say to a promoter? You know, all these guys that are there looking at you right now and trying to hear. What would you say to a promoter when they want to know how do I deal with you? Who you know, you are the VIP host, the VIP you know manager host, whatever you want to call it. I have my clients. I don't want to lose them to you. Right. Um, I don't want to lose. You know. Um, being, the, you know, the main person, the, the guy that's bringing all these clients, the big guy. I want to make sure that the owners know, because that's how they feel, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, wanna, I want to get understand. the credit. I don't want to lose the credit. Absolutely. I don't wanna... So, what would you say to them? Like, what, what? To me, it's all about communicate. Like I said, communication. Communicate with the front door. Communicate with the person doing the reservations. It's all about because if you have bad communication with, I think every anyone at the front door, this is gonna make it so much more difficult right. for you. It is the first impression. Yes, it is. Like if you can be like, hey, you know, how are you? Like this is my client. He's a VIP. Right. Versus like, oh, it's my client. He's a VIP. What's right. up? You know, it's like, okay, yeah. you know, you kind of get come in with that attitude and you're gonna get pushed right. to the side even if you have a, a you know your biggest VIP correct versus so, somebody else so you like said something at the beginning that makes a lot of sense the the front door yes is what controls most of the nightlife at the beach meaning yes you know it has more of the power of being able to say okay these are the people that get in these are the people that are gonna sit here or there these people or let's say these promoters get credit for this or that um, these guys are not gonna get in. Um, different, like prim even this guy's gonna spend this much, at least. Mm -hmm. so you could overspend inside. So there's a lot of say at the front door. A lot. Do you think that the front door is given the respect that uh, it deserves when it comes to that? I think it. Uh, well. We're, now we're gonna separate it, the two. It, all, it all really depends on which side exactly. of the bridge you're talking about. It's, and we're you, talking about Miami here. I mean, this is different if, anywhere else. To me, I think if you're over the bridge, yes, the door does get the respect. Like at the beach, that's like your your command center. It's your cons you know the control system there. Right. They do get the respect. Maybe on the other side, uh, it's like a 50-50. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think it. Can gets, I ask you a question? Yes. What kind of communication do you usually have with the promoters on the beach that you don't have with the promoters on this side of the beach? Um, for the most, the promoters on the beach are uh, much more, I would say, disciplined. Disciplined because they have to go through a system. 
Um, so they, they have to communicate because if you missed anything in that communication, it can go wrong in so many different ways with your client, with your table, with your girls. It could just go wrong. You could lose a table, you could lose a client, you could lose your spot. You just, you have to communicate. So right. I feel like the promoters are always like letting the front door know whether it's a host, a manager, a director, what's going on with their client. When you're doing this, does texting. that mean texting? Got it. Texting. All right, no, 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 I want to make sure because it's, I mean, some people are listening and not watching, yeah. but you're talking about texting because, and I want to mention this because a lot of promoters love being at the door, physically being at the door. That's something that we try, try, try our best, that it doesn't happen, but it's super hard. It and they will hard. always, like you tell a promoter over and over, I don't want you at the door. And they always answer the same, but my client. And you always say the same, yeah, but he doesn't need to. And there's somebody there and just say her name and ask for, and da 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 da, da. And we explain a thousand times and yeah, they still do it. They're stubborn, very right, stubborn. Right, right, right. And, uh, and it's kind of like, they see the main promoters and they go, well, if they're there, I want to do the same kind of thing also. So I think there, main promoters should set the example. If you are a main promoter and you're throwing a party, it's your party. And I've heard a lot of you say, hey, it's my party and, you know, like I do as I want to <laughs> cry if I want. So the point is, you got to set the example. You got to lead by example. If you want your sub promoters to not be at the door, you gotta be the first one inside taking care of your clients and making sure you have that, you know, text, that communication with the front door as to, by the way, Pedro is coming and he's gonna ask for Mercedes, please let him in. He's coming with three friends or he's gonna get a t anything. Normally it's a, sh a chat, you know, chat. chat, sorry, a chat <laughs> is a chat in uh, France. Um, but even if sometimes the chat is, you know, like there's too many people there, whatever, you may have direct me, private you know, text direct with the text person or whatever. Something. But I do agree that communication is is uh, is key when it comes to 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 the front door, VIP reservations, um, you know, just saying everything that you have, but you, that you know ahead of time, Absolutely. not waiting for that last minute. I mean, I uh, there's another thing. A lot of people have um, reservations, sometimes promoters, and they don't bring them to the table because they think, oh, this is like 80% sure that they're coming. No, it should be in the system at exactly. all times. At all times, at I agree. All times. I agree. At all times. Um, you know, and they might show up, maybe they don't, but we have a certain time, you know, where you cut that off, which is something some promoters don't understand. I mean, usually, like, if it's really busy, Right. Then we give you an option. If your client is not here by one, we got to sell the table. Mm -hmm. If it's not so busy, then we'll, we'll leave it there because there's availability. So he can right. show up at three in the morning and we'll still give him the table. Right. So if it's too busy, right. yes, you have a time frame cut off. Sorry. Right. Right, right, right. So yeah, that's something you guys should understand too. You have a table, you have a reservation, it, and they sell that table because your client didn't show up at you know, before that certain time that you should already know that exists, <laughs> don't complain about it. Ask your client to be there early next time. I mean, it's it's that simple, that easy. Now, there's ways. You could always have, you know, the client pay ahead of time or, or you know, down payment on the table, whatever. There's different ways where you can actually separate and actually give information, like credit card information, so that that reservation is already kind of paid for in case if the client does not show up, you still get to charge them at least some percentage of whatever they are SBP'd um, because you do lose the real estate. And the reality is that in this industry, we are selling real estate inside. I mean, the, mm -hmm. each uh, table is a piece of real estate and it has a price. That's why, that's one of the difference between the beach and Brickle Soup. I mean, um, when it comes to the minimums and, and the real estate, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, the, big the, difference there. Yeah, it's and, but but it's a reality. You do get a lot of a lot of big spenders at the beach that you might you know get in other even areas local. Of, of a lot of them are local. Yeah, it's, and, it's not 100 percent um, tourism. It's also locals for sure. I, I I actually think most tourism is more GA. Most of the tourism, you get a lot of big ones that arrive, but the big 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 spenders are usually local. The ones that. Yeah, the ones that are stay around yeah, the yeah, yeah. Um, And the ones that you get to come back all the time and all that kind of stuff, it's, it's usually a lo local clientele. But on the beach, it's a lot easier to say, so if you want to be in this area, it's $3,000 and up, and then in this area, it's $1,500 and up, like that. 
in Brickell, you got to play by ear a lot. A lot. Because it's it a lot really of depends. negotiation. Yeah, it really depends on what's happening inside. Everybody shows up and goes, I want to see how it is. Let me go check it out. My friend's in there. Then let me see if I'm going to get the table. Uh, so it's not really like a pre-booked 100% of the tables kind of thing. So it already depends on how it is in, in your area. But try to get as many as you can pre-booked. Make sure you know what time they need to be there, you know, so that they don't lose their table. And make sure you communicate with the door staff, with the, the specifically, mainly with the VIP manager. Dude, like, it's that easy. Now let me ask you a little bit on the other side too, before we go. Because this is a quick episode yes, and um, I know you didn't even feel the time that you've been here probably. Um, we've talked about the communication with promoters. Yes. Door. But what about communication with the owners? Communication with the owners. I yeah. mean, uh, there's different... As a VIP host, mm -hmm. do you normally deal with ownership or with management? Uh, maybe a little bit of both because you have sometimes like a, what they call an absent owner right. where he's just the owner of the club and he's just uh, not really too much involved and you have to deal with uh, management. with management Correct. so I've had both um, and sometimes it's uh, even if you have the owner present all the time mm -hmm. it's like the, the chain of command you just right. don't jump to the owner you Right. You know, so it can be it could be tricky. It could be it could be uh, overwhelming sometimes of who do you go to when you need something. Right. But uh, me, I sometimes rather go directly to the owner. Correct. I understand. I mean, it's, and I'm and I'm gonna give my piece on that one also. When it comes to the sub promoters or the promoters, the main promoter, anybody that's throwing a party, you guys have to make sure that you abide by the club rules, meaning chain of command. You gotta follow it. If you have a reservation, it's very likely that you have to send it to the VIP host, VIP manager. There's usually, usually there's gonna be a chat for that, specifically for your night, for your event, that is gonna have that person and whoever needs to be there um, from your group, right? If that venue has a manager, most likely that GM is gonna want you to communicate with them. As a promoter, so from whatever you guys most likely have to communicate with that manager. Now, if the venue does not have a manager, you only have an owner, and that's the one person you talk to. If the venue has an owner and a manager, which is what most venues have, it's both. That's where the issues begin because you jump that manager, and there's always a reason for, oh, I didn't know. You didn't tell me. You told him. He didn't tell me and point fingers and that does not work you, you could come does. up with a great idea and tell it to the wrong person and it never happens or even it may even happen on a different night that was that's not yours because you mentioned it and they were like oh you know what i heard this thing was that you no no oh let's do it <laughs> you know what i mean it, it could it, so many different things could happen um but mostly the owners have a lot in their minds even if the owners are not only only invested in this because a lot of owners have other shit going on you know even if it's not just this that they're doing it is still a lot of shit that's going on Absolutely. they are worried about paying the bills and believe me the overhead is huge <laughs> so go to the manager go to the gym make sure you have a good relationship with the gm and and you shouldn't have any issues Always. Um, with your reservations, with your front door, hosts, whatever. And the last question is, what about the doorman? Who, who really runs the door? Is it the doorman, the VIP host? Is it the hostess? Is it the promoter? Uh, the or is doorman? it the who? Who is the person at the door that is the boss? Oh. I mean, you know, past the door or behind the door? No, at the door. So you arrive at the When venue. you get to the ropes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think the doorman is very, very, very important because that's where people start asking how much is the table and how much is this and who's playing tonight. And you have to know that information. If you're going to be at the door, I think you have to, it's very important for you to know how to do sales. Right. And try to negotiate your way around that. 
Correct. So the doorman should be informed that everything else that's going on Absolutely. inside should not just be one. No. Nope. Doorman should not be a security guard. No. Who's simply opening the door. Have a, to me, you should have a doorman an and an ID guy. Doorman is Very always different. there. Hey, how are you? How many people are you? You know, what are you interested in? You right. know, figure out if they're locals or they're tourists right. because that, that is very important too. You know where to place them at. Correct. You know, if you get stuck at the door, I've had that issue where the doorman didn't have experience, he got stuck at the door. I was at the door the night, so. Right. What do you rather have, doorman, door girl? Doorman. 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 What is that, the reason why? Uh, it's a man. It's a man. There it's more, uh, I don't know, it's just More about look. respect or, or maybe... It's just, a, just a, it looks more of a, like a, an authority. More like a doorman? You know, more like a... You know, if you see a girl, I think it would be easier. What do you rather see? Door girl. I mean, if you're going to have a door girl, I don't have anything, a door girl, because I've been at the door. It has to be someone with intense attitude. Yeah, yeah. you got to like have the very, person to be very at the front. very, very intense. you got to be you know equipped for people to call you everything right. and be mad at you and tell you off because yeah. now you're just gonna start crying right. and walk away and say i don't want to do this anymore true no so, it is true and i've seen the crime by the way i, I believe it so and i've had you? ids thrown at me names called i've had uh promoters kicked out because they're too drunk you know right. it's like you have to have a stomach for that so that's why i always prefer a door man True. Or he can, you know, be like, no, I said no, bye. All right, so you tell me the doorman is very important, has a very important job. It should be a man, your opinion. But you still don't tell me who's the boss. Oh, who's the boss? At the door. <laughs> um, okay, so the boss, I think, would be so the, the, like, the be manager outside. The manager outside, whether it's a manager or director, whatever you want to call that person, should be the one, you know, that's how I've seen it. Right. You have your doorman, you have your, your cashier girl, you have your podium girl, and then you have your host. Correct. There's always a manager outside to say, okay, no, this is when it's going to be done, like to take the final right. decision on that. I think you should be the manager. Okay. There you go. So it's not the doorman, it's not the VIP host, it's not the promoter, it's not the hostess, it's another manager. It's the manager that's assigned to be outside, whoever there that may be. You know, we just need to make it, you know, just easy gotta for everybody. Just got to meet somewhere in between, guys. That's <laughs> there all. There you go. There you go. Guys, right, so anyway, thank you so much for coming all the way over here. I know you drove like 45 hours uh, from Wichita. <laughs> um, but we wanted to hear from you. We've been wanting to interview somebody from the door and somebody who's had a little experience on both sides of the bridge um, because people do not realize how different things could be in one city. Imagine how different it could be for you guys in Australia or in Canada or in South Africa. Things do change a lot. A lot. Um, and it's going to change according to the way the owner sees the business, the manager sees the business, the staff sees the business, the promoters see the business, the kind of clientele you get. It's just huge. But the main thing that I believe is that you all have to be one family in one page, in one direction, and make sure you're all working together for the same purpose. Correct? Correct. All right. Thank you for coming. Again, they can follow you where? At Mercy's Night 9. There you go. We'll put it down there if yeah. you can find it. You guys are gonna get it. And remember, Let's you get the book on uh, Amazon. Thanks to LMG for sponsoring the podcast. Uh, you get all the episodes at nightlifepodcast.com. And you can follow me at Nightlife Entrepreneurs on Instagram. See you guys next week.